Hi, everybody. Greetings from Dharamsala. Uh, I am here in Dharamsala, India, uh, visiting Singhia for a few weeks. So um, I hope that this internet uh, connection it's okay. So please let me know if you hear me okay, if you see me okay. Um, it has been uh, so much rain here for three, four days non-stop. So it's kind of unusual. So, but today uh, it's a beautiful day. So, and I hope the internet connection is okay. Um, the hotel that I'm staying has a really bad uh, connection. <laughs> so, Singe uh, landed me his uh, portable Wi-Fi and he said to me, he said, I think you have a little bit more important thing than me watching YouTube. So you can have it mine and I will go downstairs to the restaurant to watch some of his uh, YouTube. So he was very kind. <laughs> so anyway, I'm happy to be uh, be here with all of you. Um, so you all hear me okay? Okay, wonderful. Uh, so, so it's been uh, some time uh, since the last uh, time we uh, spoke and um, I was talking a little bit about uh, my personal reflection on uh, wisdoms. And so uh, I would encourage all of you to continuously watch uh, the great um, but the teachings with all the teachers from all the six different schools have presented each uh, school's point of view of uh, five wisdom, even though they were very short, very fast. But since it's recorded, so uh, you can watch again and again, rewind again and again. Hope, hopefully, uh, it will. It's helpful. So uh, and also, I will try to also make a little short. I will uh, make a little bit short uh, tonight uh, explanation. So first of all, you know, wisdom is something that we all, I think every spiritual tradition uh, talk about and every Buddhist schools talk about. And uh, in a way, when we think about method and wisdom or the compassion and wisdom, uh, compassion or the method is something that uh, all the school traditions, uh, primarily all the school traditions agrees, so that um, there's not much of issues there. But when it comes to the wisdom, sometimes there's always uh, some sense of uh, philosophical disagreement among tenet systems, doctrines, even sometimes among schools. Uh, so, uh, but I don't want you to go, get into those uh, uh, differences. Rather, I wanted to talk a little bit about what was something that which is more in common, something which is more uh, uh, same principle, and particularly something that that we all ordinary people understand. I think that's kind of my more more personal interest. That's why I'm, I prefer to say a little bit like more like personal reflections. So. So first of all, um, to, to think about wisdom will be um, without the wisdom, it's, it is impossible to cut the root of samsara. So without wisdom, one will not able to cut the root of samsara. One will not able to overcome suffering. One will not able to fully liberate from all circumstances and conditions. So ultimate liberation, ultimate freedom, ultimate overcoming conflicts and sufferings, the main key is the wisdom. And then of course, once again, 
what is that wisdom is. So what is that wisdom is, is the truth. What is that wisdom is, the understanding of the truth. Understanding of the truth of all existence. Understanding the truth of outer existence, all the phenomena. Uh, an understanding of our own inner, inner truth or understanding of our true self. So, of course, in a, like sometime in epistemology, in, a, in, a, in the Sutric tradition, sometime uh, there's a lot of emphasis on, on outer uh, truth, uh, the emptiness, shunyata, uh, lack of inherent existence, lack of inherent, inherent existence of pillar, um, vas, and so we sometimes spend in a lot of many, many years uh, debating, discussing and uh, exploring the idea of if the, if the outer phenomena like a vase and a pillar, do they really exist inherently or not? So that's definitely one very important approach. I think it's very, very valuable. But on the other hand, like uh, traditions like uh, Dzogchen, uh, first of all, it does not very much, it's not a, so much based on epistemology, uh, it's not very much based on intellect, intellect, and so it's very much more ex experiential, exploring inner self. So, so that means, so basically, uh, in, in, in terms of what wisdom is, it's very much looking about who one is, who am I. So if you really truly understand who you are, or when we say Rango Rangishe Prachinji Lop, bless me to recognize my face, bless me to recognize my true self, bless me to recognize who truly I am. If if we are blessed, if we feel these blessing streams from the lineage, the masters, uh, we, when we are able to turn off our intellect, uh, doubt our thoughts uh, for a moment and when, I, when we are able to uh, rest a little bit more in our body, when we are in that stillness, when we are able to rest in, uh, in our speech, in that silence, when we are able to rest in that the openness and spaciousness of our heart and our mind, when we are able to rest, then only we have some access to those blessings of the masters, the lineage, connection to the present moment, connection to your own three existence, three doors, body, speech, and mind. And through these doors, we are able to have some glimpse of experiences of who we truly are. And in that moment, we have some experiences of wisdom. This is what wisdom means. So some sense of, um, for example, to, to chase, to, uh, to want more, to need more, to, to, mod for, or to, to want more higher positions, to more, more fame, more wealth, more titles, uh, to climbing on those samsaric outer situations, it's every human's nature. People kind of born with it mostly, kind of look for more. This is the mantra we do for more. But to let go of what you have, or let go of what you grasp, or let go of what you identify with and come down to lower place, fewer things. It's not everybody can do because it requires a lot of strength, comfort, inner confidence. And uh, so that inner strength is obviously that inner strength has something to do with the wisdom. In some sense, it has something to do with knowing yourself, not identifying with things, what you think you are, but which you are not, 
and which you are stuck in for many years, which you are getting tired of, then you recognize some sense of, um, some sense of basically, it's not there that what you identify. It's like in, a, in epistemology in a sutric system, through logic, through logic, um, you you get to realize that there is nothing inherently there. If you search, there is nothing inherently there. Nothing there. Everything is projection of our mind. We project through our needs. We project through limited circumstances what we are able to project. And we think what we see, what we have projected is the truth, which is not. So we, so that is, so basically, so a very simple sense of wisdom is understanding of the truth. And truth is not something that we, conventional sense we think truth, because every, every war, every conflict, every social issues, every fight between two people, it's, there is always two sides of the coin. There is always two sides of the truth. And obviously both sides completely believe the truth is on their side. One does not think, oh no, I am pretending to be I understand the truth. I pretend to be what I say is I believe in it. But the truth is the other side, they have more truth. No, they don't think that way. They think truly they have the truth. So what in a, an ultimate sense, what it's saying is there is no ultimate sense of truth. There is no, not exist both sides because both sides have conventional relative truth and that those truth make socially sense to those believers in that group. Sometimes we have bigger group believes in one thing. So sometimes that becomes more truth than the smaller belief or sometimes more powerful collective uh, uh, beliefs becomes more the truth because there's more, there's more power, there's more bigger group, and there is, yeah, this, it just takes power, takes over the things, but still that does not say they have the truth either because the, both sides does not have the truth because both sides are believing, projecting on their limited conventional truth. Because some point, so if you look back, something that we think of, something is a truth, or something is okay, something is acceptable socially, and then changes of the society, changes of the people, then does not become the truth, or even acceptable later on. So what we think is acceptable or truth today, probably in 100 years time, this is totally not acceptable and totally it's not, not the truth. But this, these are, therefore these are called conventional truth. And obviously we need to respect conventional truth. We need to follow conventional truth, but we, do, we should not get stuck in those conventional truth. And we always look for higher truth beyond self, beyond circumstances, beyond conditions, beyond limitations, beyond um, our own pain, beyond our own limited opinions. Uh, we, need, we need to try to go beyond that. So, so that is uh, what really like uh, the idea of wisdom is. So some sense in our own ordinary life, I think there's always this sense of how I can do that. You know, how I can how I can live fully in this moment, respect fully people that I live with, respect fully the conditions of people who are having so much conditions, lost so much stories, and even though many of these stories doesn't make any sense, but still able to respect, acknowledge, care, and help, and but always, but not get caught up in others' stories, because you have, hopefully you have little better stories then there are many other stories out there. So you have to, you have you have you have your own work to deal with your your own, hopefully better stories. Then all these stories that doesn't make any sense out there that exist. So now um, 
Yes, of course. So, you know, like, um, uh, if you think about so our conflict and sufferings, there's a lot of things out there in our world that produces suffering. Think about uh, in terms of the uh, separation, divorce, uh, fight uh, again, fight for property, wealth, and in uh, inher inherent inheritance, and um, fame, name, ideology. Uh, think about that. All those conflict that people fight for and and suffer uh, produce suffer through them, and then this is very out, outside outside thing. You know, like the outer world that producing conflict and suffering. And so somehow you need to understand, okay, well, conflict is about car, conflict is about the house, uh, conflict is about the title, conflict is about whatever it is. It is something outside. It really doesn't matter so much. End of the day, it really doesn't matter so much. But do you, do you have the, some sense of clue it does it does it really matter can you let it can you if you really feel enough space you can let go if you feel enough confidence you can let go if you feel enough playful you can laugh you can smile if you feel enough uh, warmth you you can be kind you can be giving be you can be generous you can be all those things because all these qualities can come out of some sense of openness of the identity of self. Therefore, that means you are getting closer to understanding of that boundless self, even though it's not, you don't fully understand the boundless, but your boundaries are opening, therefore you are getting closer to that boundless. A uh, sign is that you are able to let go of so many things that you hold on. So that's a very normal outside situation. But more important thing, it's not outside because the moment of the great moment of the death comes. You really, if, if doctor tells you, you have three months to live, you have one year to live, would you still worry about your house? Would you still worry about the car? Would you si still worry about the, your title? You, would you still worry about many things that you are worried now, that you identify now, which is very external matters? You would not worry about that. That point, you have news about few months to live or one year to live, that point, you worry about yourself. Me, I, not the car, not the house, not those outer conflicts, Immediately fear is losing not the car, house, fame, losing myself. So bigger issue of is losing self. And who is this? I'm afraid of losing myself, but I have no clear clue who who am I. So so you're afraid of losing something which you have no clue of what that is, who that is, right? So that means it really doesn't make much sense. So you're, you're worried about something if you don't know what you're worried about. But that definitely erases our important question in life to really understand who am I? And that is a true journey of every spiritual seeker, every yogi, the masters who have achieved realization, body of light, their single journey was about that self-realization, self-liberation. So, so that is, you know, in the end, when you come down, back to you, it's not about outer situation now, it is about me. I feel like I'm going to lose something. And uh, 
all my sufferings are produced because of two phenomenal grasping, so grasping phenomena, every existence I grasp, but every existence has something to do with me. All things I possess or wanted to possess, what I have been possessing or what I have been holding on. Of course, they all are my sources of suffering. When, I, when it comes to me and my belonging, then my me becomes more important, not my belonging, not what I possess. I can let them go, but if I can hold on myself. Last moment of the death, if somebody says, we'll let you live, lo live longer if you are able to let go of your new car. What, what is the answer? Please take my new car. Will let you, let you live longer if you let go of your house. Please take it. I'll let you live longer and healthier if you let go of your status. Please take it. So that means we're willing to go, let go of all those things, but not ourselves. That means self-identity, self-grasping, or what we say, dangzi, or denzi, it's stronger. That is much stronger. So that is what, you know, probably in, 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 in some sense, that in all of our, it's uh, naturally evolving things in our life, when we get older, probably that's what we feel. We feel a little bit more, not so much attached to what we possess, or what we grasp. It's more like uh, our own journey, our own self, trying to really understand your own inner self. And uh, only way to understand that inner self is through really personal pain, personal pain. personal fear not so much outer situation professional or something more like a deeper sense and so because we know our suffering our pain it's directly related to those those issues because anytime something happens we you feel it so wisdom is very much really like able to address those things. You know, so um, when all the wonderful teachers, when they were teaching about each from each tradition, uh, and uh, I was l looking a little bit about Minjuru uh, Boche uh, and uh, and also Tobutuku uh, when they were speaking a little bit about from Minjuru Boche, Tobutuku particularly from from Nyingma tradition, uh, Longchen Ramjampa and, uh, and Longchen Ramjampa about uh, um, the five wisdom and Kunche Jingme Lingpa's also notion of five wisdom. So one, one of the things basically it's uh, very much that um, these, all, all the five wisdoms basically, it has something to do with how we handle our afflictions and particularly how we handle our five poisons, how we handle ignorance. Because ignorance is something, lack of understanding of truth of phenomenal or lack of understanding of truth of self. That's really what the ignorance is. And uh, so hatred, for example, Jealousy, pride, greediness. So, uh, so these uh, like five poisons, which is an experience of emotion that we we experience, we feel, 
in our everyday life when we, when we encounter when we counter particular situations when we face them but the root of these uh, experiences has something rooted back to the ignorance lack of self realization and so in this teaching is really basically saying that seeing something like there's one line in Dzogchen Shangjun Yinju text it says chun to tawa kolsa chun to tawa kolsa seeing these five poisons error is a mistaken or seeing the five poison is a bad is a mistaken that literally means i think seeing any, anything wrong completely wrong it's not a approach of the Dzogchen Because many times, uh, for example, you can hate the hate. You can be attached to the attachment. You can get agitation, agitated about peace. So, so in some sense of these experiences, a raw emotional experiences that we have, if you see something wrong, what they are, then that's not the approach of Dzogchen. For, for example, in some sense, we have a body. Body is not a wrong thing. Nothing wrong about the body. Even though there is a limitation to it, there is a challenges with it, particularly as we get older. Our anger, there's nothing particularly wrong about our anger as a human. When you, when you look at our angry is wrong, there's no differences between anger and the one who sees the anger is wrong. There's no differences. So why you create two, two wrong things instead of having just one? So looking at raw human, human emotion, something fundamentally sinful or wrong or mistaken or, or something bad. It's not the way to liberate them. It's not the way to even handle them. It's not the way even to have some sense of peace with that, peace with them. So the idea of uh, in a, uh, the in burnt tradition and also in a Nyingma tradition, this idea of the, the peacock and the poison. Peacock does not renounce poison. Peacock does not change the poison like a doctor, to, to transforming into medicine. So peacock does not transform pe uh, poison into medicine like a doctor. Peacock does not renounce the poisons like ordinary person getting rid of seeing something wrong in poison peacock is able to eat the poison and if eating the poison it what it does it 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 makes the peacock more beautiful so what does that mean is that means like uh, our own emotions they are a natural part of our existence. Being, creating a right space, accommodating, hosting, being aware, connecting, processing, resting with them in connection is the way to heal them, clear them, process them, liberate them, and not affected by them, then that, that is what you need to do. Obviously, not everybody can eat poison, not everybody can accommodate anger. When you really feel angry, in that very, very moment, when you really feel angry, that very, very moment, most of the people, they lose control, they express in a very harsh way, 
they do something big mistake they go some a prison for life because of that one single moment of rage they do that but but if they if they knew there is a better way to handle it if they knew even when before even the anger arises if they can f feel that ground that energy that shortage of breath that agitation in the body that emotions that expressions some some glimpse of thoughts when they can feel that they can create a space if they are taught they can create space but they will definitely don't have to do negative action then they can also maybe avoid the certain situation so they either they will be able to avoid avoid the circumstances the situation they are able to not express they are able to breathe look at it or they will be able to create enough space to clear it to process it to how you say like uh, brighten themselves like uh, enhance their as uh, confidence strength of voidness wisdom because it's like uh, these strong challenges are stronger support of wisdom like a, a stronger fire are uh, supported by the wind a weaker fires are blown away by the wind so the wind is like a our circumstances our everyday life but if you have the fire is wisdom fire is strong then they support to make it stronger so so that is uh, um some sense of uh, what i think a uh, wisdom notion of wisdom is so how how everybody is um, is it making any sense what i am saying you know i'm trying to of course i can go through this a little bit text through this text and trying to explain through that i'm trying to personal reflection i'm trying to make make it a little bit more simpler uh, more personal so i hope making a little more most i hope what i'm saying uh, last session and this session it's some sense connected with all the wonderful uh, explanations all the teachers did uh, what i'm trying to say i hope there is some you feel some connection what every all the teachers what they have taught uh, and uh, and my uh, request and encouraged encouragement to all of you is trying to see what i'm saying and what they have taught making a link some kind of trying to make some sense and that all those things trying to make sense in yourself so we will uh, do a little short meditation and uh, so i hope all of you uh, understood something here and make some some sense here and you can all uh, relax your body sit comfortably and uh, take a deep breath bring your full attention to this place where you are and this moment where you are in
allow your body to fully rest. and feel the stillness. Allow your speech to fully rest. Feel the silence. Allow your mind to fully rest. Be aware of the spaciousness. And whatever is going on in your life with all the samsaric stories, particularly more personal samsaric stories than the collective one, which sometimes can be when we engage the collective suffering, conflict, it's a tendency to run away from personal one. So, but sometime in collective, you can also experience the personal one. So just bring a little bit more attention to more personal one, where you feel threat, challenge, fearful, painful, worried, all or one of five poisons, active, this moment in your life. and feel the collective blessing support of Cyber Sangha, a power of collective practice. Feel the support from each other, that I'm opening myself to support all of you, and I'm also open to feel support from all of you. Feel that way. And allow to self-process, self-clear, self-heal, self-liberate these challenging emotions, thoughts that you're experiencing this moment as I sing the three syllable of body, speech, and mind.
Okay, so give it a shot. So, how was the meditation? So, Senge is here, wanted to, uh, I'll say, hi, Lagan. Hello, everyone. Senge says, hi to all the Cyber Sangha, everybody. Like you can say. Oh, hello, all the Cyber Sangha. <laughs> That's all? Yeah, really. So, okay. okay. Well, you do back to what you gotta do. And uh, thank you, everybody. Okay, so um, I'm not sure when the next uh, uh, Facebook Live I will able to do. Sometime it's a little bit challenging, and uh, all the internet connection. So uh, um, all my blessings, my love to all of you. And I will see you all soon.